Hi everybody. Uh, good morning. So this is our paper that we recently published in a prestigious uh, journal, Diabetes Metabolism Clinical Research and Reviews. And uh, this I am from a PGI Chandigarh. And this study was much needed study because uh, we don't have the data, especially the Indian data regarding the bladder cancer with pyogridazone. So we designed this study way back in 2014. Though it was it took around six, uh, uh, three, four years before it could be funded by the ICMR. So this was a case control study. And uh, this is the paper that we recently published, which came out of this research that went on for around four years. And uh, we had, this is a multi-centric study where uh, we had uh, centers from Rotak and uh, from St. John's and Ames, uh, Jodhpur also. So then I am the corresponding author from uh, PGH Chandigarh for this relevant paper. The question is why this study was planned? Because we know that uh, with pyoglitazone, there was some hint about the bladder cancer and that came first from the proactive trial, which was published way back in uh, 2005. And they found a certain imbalance in the bladder cancer cases between pyoglitazone and placebo, with the relative risk of 2.36, that is almost 2.3 times increased risk of bladder cancer. Though it was not found to be statistically significant, as you can see, the CI was on the either side of one. And they overall had just 18 cases of bladder cancer. But that hinted that probably these patients of pyoglitazone may have bladder cancer. Subsequently, other studies were done, especially the insulin databases. And this is the largest insurance database in uh, California, that is case of permanent study, which studied the bladder cancer in ever users of pyoglitazone. And they found a relative risk of 1.2, that is around 20% increased risk. But again, the CI was not found to be statistically significant. It was on either side of fun. But first, further, they dissected these patients who had bladder cancer. And they found out that those patients who are on pyoglitazone for more than two years, or those who had a cumulative dose of more than 35 grams, they were at increased risk of bladder cancer with a hazard ratio of 1.43 and that was statistically significant. And this created doubts in the mind of all treating diabetologists and physicians across the world that uh, pyoglitazone can be associated with bladder cancer. Subsequently, many other uh, countries also just juggled out their databases, especially the French database, which again suggested increased risk of bladder cancer of around 36%, then UK database of around 83%, and just because of the, these studies from the West, the pyoglitazone, uh, such an innocent drug, was banned in India in July 2012 by DCGI, suggesting that there is increased risk of bladder cancer. But the question was, do we have any Indian study or database of bladder cancer in Indian patients, especially in Southeast Asians? Or we believe that our Southeast uh, Asian, Asians or Indians just behave very similarly to the Caucasians regarding the pyoglitazone therapy. And I believe that we Southeast Asians or Indians have an entirely different phenotype and entirely different genotype also, which could have led to uh, bladder cancer or no bladder cancer in the Indians. And uh, pyoglitazone is such a beautiful insulin sanitizer in, with predominant uh, abdominal obesity, especially in Indians. That, uh, and it is such a cheap drug, which can be provided to almost each and every Indian. So we have to answer this question whether pyoglitazone can increase risk of bladder cancer. So we went ahead with this hypothesis and our aim was to find an association of bladder malignancy with pyoglitazone therapy in Asian Indian type 2 diabetes patients. The study was approved by the Institute Ethics Committee and every patient provided a written informed consent and uh, we were fortunate enough to get a funding from the ICMA New Delhi by extramural grant which was provided to me as a principal investigator. And uh, we de designed this as ambispective, that means both retrospective uh, data collection where the patient were on pyoglitazone and in the records, any bladder cancer was assessed. And even these patients were interviewed uh, uh, prospectively also. It was, was an observation multicenter study where no intervention that those patients who were on pyoglitazone, their data was collected. And it was multicenter at four centers, PGI Chandigarh, St. John's Bangalore, Ames Jodhpur and PGIMS Rotak. Unfortunately, in between we had COVID, so few, two centers dropped out. Ames, Jodhpur and St. John's did not participate later because of COVID. But yes, uh, we had PJMS Rotak and PJ Chandigarh could pool their data. And all this data was obtained from the diabetes clinic. Detailed history regarding what is the dose of pyoglitazone, how long they were on pyoglitazone, time since initiation, and all the physical examination records, the biochemical details, microvascular complications, and any cancer, especially bladder cancer, was recorded. And if patient 
had a history of bladder cancer, then whole histopathology records were also taken out for this study. So the study cohort were further divided into two main groups. That is pyoglitazone ever users. That means any patient who was exposed to pyoglitazone at any dose, the minimum definitely of 7.5 milligram for at least a year was considered as pyoglitazone ever users. And pyoglitazone never users who were exposed to pyoglitazone for less than one year were considered as pyoglitazone never users. And any patient who had a bladder cancer before uh, the diagnosis of diabetes were uh, excluded from this study. And all statistical analysis was done. And this was a powered study where we have a cases as well as control. And a logistic regression analysis was also done to find out what predicted the bladder cancer in these patients. This is a scheme of en enrollment. So we had around 8,000 records were screened at both of these centers. And after exclusions, those patients who were uh, having duration of diabetes very short or those whose age was less than 50 years because we believed that uh, patients for bladder cancer, most of these patients have to be elderly. So we took patients who were aged more than 50 years and those were incomplete data or their records were removed. And finally, we had 6,440 patient records and they were divided into ever users and never users. Ever users were around 1,000 and rest were never users. Now you can see that uh, in this group where ever users and never users, this is the baseline characteristic. The diabetes duration was significantly higher in the pilot than ever users as compared to never users. The mean blood glucose was uh, highlighted here. Again, this was a higher in patient with pilot than ever users. The BMI was same and the creatinine was uh, a little bit less in these patients. However, the EJFR was similar. Regarding other complications, it was slightly higher in uh, hypertension was higher in patient with pyoglitazone ever users. Regarding nephropathy, again, the pyoglitazone uh, never users were having higher incidence of nephropathy. So this is regarding the baseline characteristics and vascular complications in this group. When we scrutinized the records, we found almost 74 patients who had bladder cancer in the group A that is pyoglitazone ever users with around uh, two thirds of these patients were male. And in group B, 58 patients we were we found of bladder cancer who were never users. And thus, p-value was not found to be statistically significant, suggesting that pyoglitazone ever users were, did not have significantly increased risk of bladder cancer. And odds ratio was found to be 1.29. So there was around 29% increased risk of bladder cancer, prevalent bladder cancer in pyoglitazone ever users, but it was not found to be significant. You can see this uh, hazard ratio in this group. Then we further went ahead and we dissected out that those patients who had bladder cancer versus those who did not, what was the risk factors for them having bladder cancer? And we found out that elderly or age more than 58 years was the most significant risk factor for bladder cancer and with a hazard ratio 1.7 or 70% increased risk. Patients who were smokers, whether they were current or former, they had increased risk of bladder cancer. And unfortunately, if somebody is having history of hematuria, that had very high odds of having a bladder cancer. And those who have prior exposure to radiation for any other reason also have increased risk of bladder cancer. Further, we also find out the risk estimates uh, for the bladder cancer in pyoglitazone users itself. So if a patient is using pyoglitazone, what predicted the risk of bladder cancer? So again, those patients who had a history of hematuria or those who had nephropathy, only these two were the predictive factors for occurrence of bladder cancer. So if your patient is in pyoglitazone or yeah, any person of diabetes who has history of hematuria, we might should not use pyoglitazone in these patients. We also collected data regarding any other malignancy because there are a lot of many other patients who had some other malignancy. And we found out that increasing age was increased risk factor for malignancy independent of the glycemic control. The smoking status was also associated with increased risk of malignancy and radiation exposure and aromatic dyes exposure are also associated with increased risk of malignancy. In the whole cohort, we found that the breast cancer was quite common in females along with other organs in the female like cervix and endometrium. And in males, lung cancer and carcinoma prostate was the most common malignancy. And overall, we had 254 patients who had different type of malignancy in our cohort. As you can see, in female, carcinoma breast was most common and in males, carcinoma prostate was the most common malignancy. So in this paper, we concluded and finally confirmed an Indian Asian Indians Pyoglitazone use is not associated with increased risk of bladder cancer and pyoglitazone use can be considered especially in patients who are having severe insulin resistance or abdominal obesity. However, 
it should be restricted in individuals with history of hematuria and especially those who are aged more than 50 years who have some certain risk factors for bladder cancer like the history of hematuria they might not be considered for pyogliadazone and uh, otherwise age more than 50 years is associated with increased risk of development of any malignancy particularly bladder cancer so this patient this uh, uh, paper is uh, accepted and i also got many comments from this uh, paper from all across the globe even from the authors of this proactive trial so this is an advantage finally this paper have provided solid evidence regarding pyogliadazone and bladder cancer thank you and thanks for patient listening